This is a white bubble. Assistant Professor of Zoology, Bishop Kiva College, and the chairperson of Technical Session 1, to introduce our resource person, Dr. Mohamed Idris, Senior Principal Scientist, CSIR, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, Hyderabad, who will be giving the plenary lecture. And I humbly request our resource person to take 40 minutes for this lecture. Good morning. I'm very glad to welcome uh, one of the eminent scientists, Dr. Mohamed Idris, who is the senior principal scientist as the, at the CSIR Institute, that is the CCMB at Hyderabad. And uh, coming to his research interest, he is mostly interested in understanding the complexity of developmental biology and neuroscience using alternative models, animals such as zebra fish, marine corals such as uh, some of the acidians and echinoderms. And uh, this research mainly focuses on metabolism of regeneration and degeneration in the above model organisms. And uh, this work includes proteomics and transcriptomics approaches, um, and also the regeneration of appendages in zebra fish, nervous tissue in acidian, and arms in acidians are few important ongoing research which is done in this lab. And uh, he is also interested in the molecular and functional mechanism of neuro-regeneration due to triplet repeat expansion as the spinal cerebral ataxia and the Huntington's disease using zebra fish as the model. To study, he has published several papers and in several uh, reputed journals. I'm very glad to welcome uh, Dr. Mohammed Idrisa to the second session of this conference. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Benjamin for uh, inviting me to give my talk, this talk. I hope I'm audible there. Can anyone confirm me that I'm audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So I use these alternate model animals like uh, zebra fish and marine models to understanding the biomechanism of regeneration and degeneration at CCMB Hyderabad. Our, so we, this is a, to, before getting into my talk, I'd like to introduce my model animals. That is one is Danny Rario, the zebra fish, most widely used all across the globe. People are using it for various research purposes, like for understanding developmental biology, neuroscience, aging, and so on. And also very interestingly, we use in our lab, um, this lizard or a gecko, as another alternate model towards understanding the regeneration. And also through collaboration, we use marine models like um, ascidians and echinoderms towards understanding the arm regeneration. So we are trying to understand the biomechanism of fin regeneration in zebra fish. Fin here is nothing but my arm, my hand or my leg and uh, nervous tissue regeneration or the brain regeneration in ascidian, the tunicate and arm regeneration in uh, sea star and brittle star. So you know that regeneration is one of the oldest ongoing research across the globe. So based on the cellular mechanism, regeneration is of two types, morphalaxis and epimorphic. Morphalaxis is the most simplest form of regeneration where no or uh, less cellular proliferation is required to get back the tissue which it lost due to amputation or uh, predator attack. And epimorphic is the most complicated uh, mechanism of regeneration, which all the vertebrate process. It involves two or more complex steps and require active cellular proliferation. So it is of two types where the D differentiation dependent and independent. And my model animals are zebra fish, salamanders are different D differentiation dependent and planarians are D differentiation dependent. And there's people can say that uh, liver regenerates. No, those are our compensatory regeneration where new cell production is not occurs, but it's only grows. So here I introduce my zebra fish caudal fin here. 
So you can see this is a tail fin of zebra fish. If I amputate by using a surreal surgical blade, you can see within one day the wound healing happens. Then first day, uh, 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 one day to three days, the redifferentiation blastema grows. And um, you can see again, this is the, sorry. This is uh, the end of second day. You can see that blastema grows. And this is a one day. And then the structural regeneration starts from two day onwards. And third day and fourth day, you can see the bone, muscle, cells, everything regenerates. And finally, at the end of 10 to day, seven to 10 days, you will get back that complete set of lost tissue has grown back and in a full functional form. So here are the things, what is happening in this beautiful alternate vertebrate model animal is a yeah, fully developed structure is growing back upon amputation or predator attack. So the, all the muscle cells, bone cells, cartilage, blood cell, nerve cell, everything is coming and uh, which is lost due to regeneration is getting back in, up due to regeneration here. Yeah. So what we are trying to understand at CCMB in our lab is to understand this complexity of epimorphic regeneration in zebrafish involving transcriptomic and proteomic approach. So we amputate the fin on zero time point. We collect the con uh, zero cut fin as a control and we compare against various time points of uh, regeneration. And uh, if you see that uh, the regeneration is faster in the um, uh, lobe and less in the cleft. I can see, you can show, he, see here, the regeneration is slow here, whereas faster here. So we are trying to understand that mechanism, how it regulates at the molecular level involving transcriptomics and proteomics. So what happens when a tissue is amputated? A hand, if I amputate my arm, within a day or uh, within day or two, my, the, the, there is a uh, the, if you provide a proper em medical emergency, the, the tissue will start healing. That's what happens in the zebra fish also. The first uh, time point that is 12 to one day, the, the, at the site of amputation, the wound healing happens. Then, whereas in the vertebrate human model, there will be no any growth upon, uh, after amputation of the second day to any day further down the line. But in zebra fish, what will happen there is, the signal will come, start migrating from the tissue and all the signals comes from like um, de-differentiation happens, blastema grows and the tissue reconstructs themselves through a regeneration of the complete tissue with all the components, all the architecture. So here you can see injury leads to wound closure. Then if there is a proliferation cell migration, if there is no signal, the scar forms, that is what is happening in human being and skin remodels after the scar remodel. Whereas if there is a signal from nerves and other thing, other cells, then proliferation, de-differentiation happens, blastema cell grows and the signal, the tissue grows back and pattern forms and finally the structural regeneration happens. But this is what the stages which occurs, the hemostasis, amputation, wound closure, then the differentiation and the plasma formation occurs. And finally, the tissue grows back into a fully functional one. So we started a decade back this research at CCMB Hyderabad. And we used then that time the most powerful technical proteomics gel-based approach. So we amputated, collected tissue at the different stages and performed gel-based analysis and then also labeled approach analysis this is a high throughput variant which we can see uh, more than 500 to 1000 proteins, which are differentially regulates at the point of a tissue where the regeneration happens. And we found that majority of the keratin proteins are upregulated during the regeneration. And also very interestingly, we found that certain annexin genes undergoing phosphorylation during the uh, regeneration based on our 2D gel analysis we found. And then we used uh, 2D Western blood analysis to confirm. And finally, we found that this protein, annexin 1, undergoes differential phosphorylation during regeneration. Then from there, we took lead to understand this. There is any gene, any um, uh, kind of uh, regulation is there between annexin family and regeneration. Interestingly, we found that annexin 2B upregulates by more than 15-fold 
at the end of uh, one day or uh, from day two one day one to day or the, till two days so that's upregulation is might be having a different direct and uh, control and regeneration so we compared with the other annexin family gene and also we found annexin 6 is also upregulated and annexin 5 is upregulated by more than nearly three fold upregulation oh. yeah yeah then also we come uh, confirmed at the protein level using antibodies and uh, we found that uh, the immunohistochemistry that is hallmark these annexin proteins particularly annexin 1 and annexin 2 upregulates at the end of 12 day uh, 12 hours post amputation till two days post amputation you can see that bright signal this is a tip where the regeneration the plasma formation is occurring so it is upregulated there and uh, we also found that global histone modification occurs through phosphorylation and acetylation in the tissue for regeneration when uh, in the same study we have reported this work uh, this report, uh, part of the study and then in the recently in the last 2 3 years we used the most uh, powerful proteomics and transcriptomics approach through ngs and uh, eye track based high quantity uh, uh, quantitative proteomics analysis and we found that nearly 1400 odd genes and 661 proteins were differentially regulated here differentially regulated is either up regulated or down regulated during the mechanism of regeneration or during the process of regeneration you can see the red color genes are the proteins are nothing but the genes and the green color shade are the genes which are up regulated and the green color indicates the genes are the protein which are down regulated so at any point of stage a gene might up regulate at one point of time which has to down regulate during the other stage of the regeneration point so with this we found that more than this many number of genes were found to be associated and we validated all those genes and their respective time points for all the regenerating time points in their respective for their respective genes and we found that interleukin genes are generally down regulated during the process of regeneration completely it's down regulates and slc genes are up regulated mostly these are the first time these genes were reported for regeneration and their association in regeneration and neurotransmitter genes were found to be upregulated mostly in all of their time points until 7 days post amputation and you could see here that how these genes and uh, families are associated with regeneration so you can see that uh, interleukins generally uh, goes well with um, down regulation pattern throughout but uh, 12 days and 1 day are closely linked and 2 uh, days and 3 days are associated or protecting with uh, the 7 day and slc genes are completely upregulating neurotransmitters are completely upregulating here and also we have confirmed those the interleukins and cytochrome proteins through antibody arrays to see whether they are upregulated or downregulated and we found that cytochrome so found downregulated as they like found in the genes at the second day and post the third day of uh, regeneration from this rich data what we got from transcriptomics that is ngs based approach and proteomics we constructed several pathways to be associated with the regeneration of zebra fish caudal fin tissue and here you can see these are the different canonical pathways and disease in function associated with those genes which are differentially regulated and we found several new canonical pathway associated for the regeneration mechanism and yeah there somebody has raised the hand uh, is that any question there okay i'll go ahead so more than 100 and gene 10 genes and proteins were found to be associated in the proliferation pathway which occurs from the day one post amputation for the structure of regeneration and uh, you can see that how complex pathways these are the proteins which we are the genes which we identified from this mechanism uh, study for the mechanism of regeneration and also we found cytoskeletal remodeling pathway associated immune, immune response the Proteinemic pathways associated, and um, many of these were the pathways were first uh, reported to be associated with regeneration for the first time. And uh, in order to understand the functional of these annex engine, which we found to be associated by 15-fold upregulation during regeneration, we performed a novel method of uh, CRISPR-based gene knockdown in adult zebra fish, in adult live zebra fish. so we have constructed the crispr cas construct and uh, um, uh, targeting annexin 2a and 2b gene 
and we used this novel approach where we took the uh, uh, CRISPR Cas protein and the paired RNA, and we electroporated at the site of amputation, and we followed up for five days, seven days, and ten days post amputation, and we found that the structural regeneration was completely retarded upon um, targeting the gene of annexin 2A and 2B uh, using this CRISPR-based approach, which we confirmed at the PCR level and also Western blot level. Here you can see that annexin 2A and 2B is reduced on one day and two day, but it has regained at the seven day post amputation in 2A knockdown and 2B knockdown. And also surprisingly, other annexin genes were also been associated. This study has been a hallmark in the field of uh, gene targeting based in a live zebrafish and it has appeared in biochemy recent in, uh, two day years back and also we have, as i showed you we have confirmed that the western blot that genes and the proteins were uh, the genes uh, the protein also down regulated due to knockdown of the gene so um, from this i take to the other model animals what we are using in Z at ccmb is the gecko the uh, lizard where we have amputated the caudal the tail of the zebrafish and we perform this high throughput genomics and uh, transcript uh, this uh, proteomics approach. We identify several genes and proteins, and also we construct a similarly last like zebrafish new pathways, which are closely associated with our VLA studies, and which we have reported recently. And uh, also we use, as I mentioned in the beginning of my study, uh, we use uh, CDNs and echinoderms in our studies to understand the biomechanism of regeneration. So you know all that. Asiona intestinalis are a tunicate is an Assyrian species which bridges the gap between vertebrate and invertebrate. So this we can be seeing a bridging model between both the vertebrate and invertebrate. And here this is an acid uh, echinoderm is an invertebrate, and we use both Asteria's ruban that is brittle star and uh, Asteria's filiform. Uh, Amphiura filiform is uh, the starfish, and here you can see that. Uh, in Assyrian species, the, the, this is the uh, cyan intestinalis, the tunicate cyan intestinalis. There is a brain stru like structure here that is called um, neuronal structure, the uh, nervous tissue and, uh, and the cerebral ganglion. So, this upon amputation, you what uh, in Assyrian regenerates over a period of 14 to one month time. So, we performed uh, this my experiment and we perform the proteomics approach to see what are the proteins which are upregulated in the brain uh, nervous tissue of Assyrian. And uh, we were uh, also reported the brain protein map of Assyrian. Um, and we found that this is going to be a, a important study to carry on uh, to understand the biomechanism of regeneration of a nervous tissue. Whereas in human being, what we are doing is in, uh, occurring in our bodies, we are degenerating our nervous tissue. But in this model, regeneration is happening by amputation of a nervous tissue. So it will be an interesting to understand in the field of neuroscience. And also we are using uh, echinoderms, as I told, Asteria zerban, the starfish, and Amphiura filiform is the brittle star. Brittle star is one of the fastest regenerating model animal existing currently in the globe. And um, you can see at the end of one day, the, the structure has grown this much. At the end of three day post amputation, almost uh, several millimeter structure has been regrown. And at the end of five day, we can see uh, more than a two to three centimeter structure has regrown completely fully functional. Whereas in Assyria rubens and other echinoderms, the regeneration is very slow. It takes more than 21 days to get this much tissue growth back. So we are again using to understand how this regeneration is differentially occurring. One is slow and one is fast in the echinoderm family itself. And we are trying to understand using the trans gel based proteomics approach. And now also we are using high throughput uh, eye track label. So we have completed a study on Amphira filiformis and we found more than 661 proteins are associated. And we've interestingly found that cell proliferation and dedifferentiation pathway along with a TGF dependent induction pathway and cytoskeletal remodeling pathway have been associated from the study. And also integrant mediated cell adhesion pathway as the exhibit office we have been identified. And also cytoskeletal remodeling pathway been associated in the uh, arm tissue regrowth during the starfish. So also translational initiation pathway been associated in this picture you can see been associated and uh, apart from that, we also use a, 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 a seal worm called the Simsagi to We are trying to understand because if you cut this animal into two half, 
both the part will regenerate. This is very uh, unique and it uh, regenerates much faster. And also here the regeneration reverse tissue occurs. So we are trying to understand this also in our lab. So based on the, all these to study, to sum up regeneration of a whole organ in a, is a complex mechanism. It involves several genes. It's not a single gene or a, a family of one gene. It is a complex mechanism where several genes, several gene families are associated. And we found that annexin one differential phosphorylation is associated with the regeneration. And annexin two genes upregulates huge during the, in a big way during regeneration. And upon uh, targeting those genes, we found that the regeneration is retarded in zebrafish. And several pathways like status called remodeling pathway, immune response, cell proliferation were associated. And uh, uh, methylation and acetylation is also associated with the regeneration. So these data is what we generated, been submitted into several database. And apart from regeneration in our lab, we also work on understanding the mechanism of regeneration. So you know that uh, uh, regeneration is gain, regeneration is losing the mechanism or ability or the functionality. So in human being, degeneration is of three types. That is one is associated with the genetic base, like triplet repeat expansion, like Huntington disease, myocardial of disease, uh, ataxia as well. Due to reflect repeat expansion, normally it should be less than some certain repeats. If it expands, then we uh, develop that degeneration, mostly in late age. And also there are several chemicals that have been associated with the degeneration like Parkinson associated with uh, the, uh, like um, MPTP is associated with uh, Parkinson like disease in many animals, including human. And also recently we very well established that stress induces in a big way degeneration in human and also in other animal models. So here I'm showing a few slides on the, how we are using, trying to understand yeah, triplet repeat expansion associated degeneration in zebrafish. So we, uh, when we see that triplet repeat, that is poly-Q repeats in zebrafish for SCA1, SCA2, SCA3 gene, there is no poly-Q repeat at all. Whereas in human being, it is like for SCA3, it should be less than 42 repeats. If it's more than 42 repeats, we get the disease called Mercado Joseph disease and uh, around 30 to 40 years of age, depending upon the repeats, the disease is severe, it is there. So we, what we targeted is we looked at this poly, uh, expression of gene in zebrafish, and we found most it is expressed in brain and eye, both SCA1, SCA2, and SCA3. Then we introduced, we made a transgenic zebrafish SCA3 construct by introducing the repeats, more than 50 repeats, CAG repeats we introduced in the exon 7 as we find in human being. And we, uh, like here, you can see the poly-Q stretch we introduced, made a transgenic construct, and we leptoporated in the NTSL lines. And it, we found that, that uh, our expression of SCA3 with 50 Q repeats in neuronal cell lines found to be associated with uh, 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 cytoplasmic aggregation in the uh, cell body. And also in the uh, animal upon injection at the uh, micro injection at the early embryo stage, we found that the developmental delay, no eye development were occurred. And uh, this is very interesting to see that uh, by introducing a, a expanded repeats of uh, poly Q into the SCAR3 gene, the zebrafish is undergoing the uh, degenerative phenotype. And also we have done the uh, uh, behavioral analysis to say that it is highly associated with the degeneration of the animal with the repeat expansion. And uh, here I want to show you another present study where we have used uh, chronic unpredictable stress in zebrafish. This is a hallmark study in of our lab on degeneration. Like we all get to know that there are two types of stress, acute stress and chronic stress. Acute is something that comes quick uh, for a day or a week and get lost in from our body in a, uh, without even our notice. Like if you have a, some kind of a task or an exam or a, a, some kind of a assessment, we all undergo a kind of an acute stress. Means it, uh, during that time you will be stressed we will be like uh, behaving like a uh, completely stressed uh, person. And uh, whereas the same stress, if it is uh, going to exist in our body continuously, then it is going to be a chronic unpredictable stress, then chronic stress, which can lead to degeneration. So here, what we have done in zebra fish is we introduced 10 various stresses, including five major and five minor for a day of 15 days, two stress per day. And we found that by uh, these stresses, by just behaviors like uh, uh, exposing the animal to, to uh, extreme uh, higher temperature like 33 degrees centigrade 
general zebra fish lives between 25 to 28 degrees centigrade and then exposing to cold temperature showing a predator like a cecilid uh, and a fish model exposing to the cecilid and uh, chasing and uh, exposing a frequent tank change these are the stressors we have done to these animals and we performed the behavioral and molecular analysis. It was found that decreased neurogenesis was found in the telencephalon, and aptic tectum and other brain areas. And uh, molecular markers for anxiety was found to be associated in due to stress in uh, chronic stress in zebrafish. And also we found new genes and new proteins responsible for the upregulation. We were found to be upregulated for the chronic and predictable stress. And uh, this can now can be a very good model to screen novel and existing anxiolytic drug in, in a very simplest and rapid manner uh, in, uh, through this method, uh, using this model. Also, we have tried to study the light, uh, light and dark cycle in zebrafish by disturbing their light dark pattern. We expose the animals continuously to light, continuously to dark to see what is the pathway it is associated. And to the surprise, we all know that if you undergo a jet lag or a light dark cycle stress, our circadian rhythm pathway is differentially regulates. And we found the same circadian rhythm pathway was found to be differentially regulated, like gene like DMAL, PER gene, and uh, other genes uh, like uh, PER2 were found to be associated with uh, continuous exposure to light and dark cycle. And uh, also, we have validated those genes and found that uh, this uh, any animal, if you exposed to uh, in a particular in zebrafish, be exposed to different uh, light cycle condition, they undergo stress like human brain. And also, we have created a zebrafish based Parkinson disease model, and by introducing PD mimetic molecule like uh, MPTP and paraquat. We injected on for uh, two doses for a day one uh, and two days, and we found that the animal showed the phenotype of uh, uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, by, like uh, this bradykinesia and dyskinesia. You can see the animal here is injected with MPTP. Here it's with injected paraquat. This animal is not at all moving. It's completely undergoing a bout uh, movement, like uh, they are, uh, the phenotype of uh, uh, freezing bouts is observed here. This is the phenotype of uh, dyskinesia. And here you can see the control animal moves happily where we didn't inject the MPTP, but the placebo we injected here. You can see here the animal moves. You can ask me, it might be the animal dead? No, if the animal dead, it will float in the water, but this is a live animal showing the phenotype of dyskinesia. That is loss of movement and the bradykinesia with the continuously jerking freezing bouts. And then we uh, validated, uh, we uh, performed the high throughput analysis on this Parkinson disease model of zebrafish we found several genes and uh, proteins were associated. This can be an existing uh, interesting model to screen Parkinson-based drugs in zebrafish and for the, uh, in zebrafish. So it will be a completely a new alternate model for understanding uh, Parkinson disease, or if you want to uh, screen a drug or uh, looking for a novel target for Parkinson disease. With this, um, I conclude my talk. So. I, as always, I end up my talk with saying, putting this poster, let us start producing big animals and let us you start using the small animals like zebrafish and marine models as we have a lot of surplus model available in the marine source. And we can use those models to study our development of biology or the uh, neuroscience. So let us not stop using our big animals because they do have a problem. And uh, I thank, uh, acknowledging my lab members, Banu, um, Soumya, and Anusha, who has done the most of the work which I presented in, uh, some, uh, today. And also I thank CSIR, Marine Genomics Europe, DBT, DST, and uh, uh, Sweden KVFN. Thank you so much. I can take a few questions if any interesting questions are there. Those who are connected virtually are also allowed to ask the questions. So somebody has raised, Dr. K. Arulda has raised his hand. Yeah, Dr. K. Aruldas. Oh, 
Okay. The next next speaker is ready. There are no questions. Uh, we can wind up the session. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful talk. Thank you so much. Bye. Now, I would like to invite our department's beloved professor, Dr. Zay Zhu. Assistant Professor of Zoology, Bishop Bishop College, and also the Chairman of Technical Session 1, to make known about our resource person, Dr. Sveta Saran, Professor, School of Life Science, Jawaharlal Nehru Institute, University, New Delhi, who will, who will be giving the plenary lecture. And I humbly request our resource person to take 40 minutes for, for her lecture. <laughs> 